daemons and future AI overlords. I'm using Microsoft Edge, and today I want to look at Copilot and Outlook. So email is, you know, so important to our lives personally and professionally. Um, I'm a big Gmail user predominantly, um, but I've been exploring Outlook. Um, these Copilots are really uh, giving me more, you know, kind of focus on looking at the Microsoft platform, not just for work. That's primarily where I use it is just at work. Um, but uh, leveraging some of the Copilot capability inside these tools is opening up my eyes to different ways I can use it personally beyond just professionally. So one of the things that's uh, great about the new um, Copilot and Outlook is that it's going to basically help you, you know, catch up prepare and follow up with your emails. I don't know about you, but I get a lot of emails, uh, not as many as some of my, my, my peers, but um, I get plenty of them and um, it can be uh, really burdensome, particularly when you get those super long emails that are very um, lengthy. Anyway, but what we're gonna talk about first is I'm gonna go into Outlook and here I'm in my, my, my personal Outlook and if I wanted to uh, generate just like a simple email um, where I wanted to just uh, maybe provide uh, Satya Nadella some feedback, um, I'm just gonna create a new email. And then up here you can see I've got Copilot. And you've got the option to draft with Copilot or coach with Copilot. So drafting with Copilot, you know, that's really the process um, where you're you know, creating the content, you know, generating the email, um, you know, it's going to help you write paragraphs, um, suggest, you know, different phrases and sentences, you know, things like that. So it's really ideal for, you know, kind of overcoming like writer's block or just getting started, you know, generating those ideas you need to communicate the content in that email. So it's going to really help you save time in drafting your emails uh, and things like that. So I'm just going to click the draft with Copilot. Um, and then I'm just going to paste um, in here. I'm going to say, let Satya Nadella know how much I'm enjoying learning about the Copilot experiences in Microsoft 365. Um, I know this is going to take my everyday productivity to new levels. Um, so I'm just going to click generate and it will create a draft. Um, so it created a draft here, you know, dear Satya Nadella, I want to take a moment to express how much I'm enjoying learning about the Copilot experiences in Microsoft 365. I'm truly impressed with the capabilities and potential for increased productivity. I'm confident that it will take my everyday productivity to a new level, to new levels. Thank you for all the hard work and dedication that has gone into developing such a remarkable tool. Best regards. So I'm just going to say keep it because that's pretty awesome. Now, um, sometimes it will, 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 you know, will format it a little bit. Sometimes it, it won't um, like it did here. It didn't quite format it. So I could kind of break it out here. And then it looks, you know, formatted a little bit more like like a basic email. But that was super quick, and to be honest with you, sounds significantly more professional than my basic. So it's one of those things like when you've got an intent for an email, you know, just put that intent uh, in the draft. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to click on the coaching by Copilot. So it will analyze the content. Look at that, reviewing for tone, clarity, etc., um, gathering insights. So okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> so, so initially saying tone is too informal. This email is expressing appreciation for a product, but the tone sounds too casual for a professional communication. And then it has a suggestion. Instead, I wanted to take a moment. Um, you know, the email could say, "I'm writing to you. I'd like you. I would like to, you know, consider changing the sign off to sincerely, yours faithfully, best regards." Um, you know, show more enthusiasm. This email is praising a product, but the reader might not feel the genuine excitement or interest of the writer. So it gives some suggestions around try any words that convey positive emotion, like amazing, incredible, fantastic. This email could also include specific examples of how the product has improved the writer's productivity. And these are, this is really great feedback. Clarity is good. This email is clear, but the main purpose and the message. So it's, at least it's letting me know that that's good. So. That's really cool. I, I, you know, and you can click regenerate, and then I could actually edit this with that feedback and 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 make it a better email, and then use the coaching by Copilot again. And I do have to say, I've played around with it a little bit, 
And, and you can definitely get into a coaching by copilot loop where it is never satisfied with the email. It's always going to give you feedback improvements. It's going to say it's too formal. It's too informal. It'll it, it literally, I was chasing my tail like a dog when I was playing with this. Um, so I think it's, it's great. It's just coaching doesn't mean you have to take it all. Um, but I think it does provide really great examples. And I'm not like a really good writer. Um, I feel though that people that are really good at this, it could make them question, hey, are they really that good? <laughs> Especially when it just seems to be providing, um, you know, uh, ideas, you know, but it's that whole concept of, you know, ideas aren't bad. You, you can take them or leave them, you know, don't, don't let it become like the judgmental, co you know, coaching by co-pilot. Um, but yeah, so I think that's that's really you know pretty fantastic. Um, for example, one of its superpowers too is its ability to. So we we talked about drafting a new email and then coaching. So you've got that creating content and then revising content. But what about when you get those super long emails? You're like, oh my gosh, it's got so much in there. What like I like you know like um, I'm going into a meeting with this person. I have not read this email. Uh, but I need to think, I need to like intelligently get the basics. So I'm going to click the summary by Copilot. So it's scanning the email, combing through the info. I love the status updates, summary, pulling it all together. So here it provides this really great summary of this super long email. Um, and it gives me some, you know, some, some of the key points from the email so that I can at least you know, either when I have more time, go back and look at the details behind this, but this gives me enough information that, you know, let's say I'm going into a meeting or something and I just need to know, hey, is this important to me? Is this relevant to me? Do I need to pass this on to someone that's more relevant to someone, something like that? So I think it's great that it's going to help me reduce the amount of time I spend looking at content that may not be relevant to me. But also when you have those super long threads of emails, response back and forth, it can look through those really long um, emails and not only provide you with a summary, um, you know, but it can actually identify the important points of the email and put citations in the summary where you can click on it and it'll take you directly to that content. So I think the summary by, by Copilot is probably one of the most magical features. Uh, using AIs to summarize you know, video content, rewrite things. I mean, that's that's a, a kind of a very common, you know, kind of capability that we've been using in these um, AI enabled chatbots for a while, but just integrating it into the flow of your work with a click of a button instead of cut and paste, put it in a chatbot, do the summary, cut and paste, bring it back over. Um, this just makes it a lot easier. Now I do want to say there are limitations. So um, you might see a warning where the summary, I mean, it might say something like, doesn't represent the full thread. Um, that just means that, um, that the summary was too big to be uh, uh, pulled into the LLM and be fully analyzed. So, uh, so just you know, be warned that, that sometimes the LLM can't take the scope of this like gigantic thread. Um, you know, so that is a, a limitation. And the same is true with, with you know, the other capabilities, like with drafting and coaching by Copilot. Um, you know, so with drafting, you know, there's a limitation. Uh, there's not a limitation in the prompt necessarily, but the limitation is how much data can be passed into, LLM, into the LLM. So, um, and, and sadly, Microsoft isn't super clear on that, but you will get a warning uh, if it's too long um, and if not, not everything's been taken into account. Uh, so, you know, so that, and that's a little bit of annoying because it's sort of like, man, the whole point of this is to look at these gigantic threads and long emails and stuff and, and give us the, the summary. Um, uh, another limitation is that in the coaching by Copilot is that if the draft is less than 100 characters, it can't provide any coaching. So, you know, so just know that, um, you know, there are some limitations and of course there are the core risks around this is that uh, large language models sometimes provide inaccurate information. They may uh, provide inappropriate information, so you have to be aware of that. So it would be so embarrassing to be using these tools in a professional setting, all of a sudden inappropriate co content gets put in an email through an AI. Um, so just it's important to use this to draft content, 
but more importantly, review the content to make sure it's accurate and not inappropriate. Uh, but anyway, um, I still feel like these basic, you know, these three core capabilities um, are just amazing. Summarizing, drafting with Copilot, and coaching by Copilot. I know they're going to make my email creation, review, and revise significantly better. Anyway, thank you for joining me today. Uh, see you in the next video.